Hello everyone and let me show you another beautiful chess game by Adolf Anderson and in this chess game Anderson has the white pieces and his opponent is Louis Paulsen and in 1860s and in 1870s Louis Paulsen was one of the five top players in the world. He was one of the most important chess contenders in his era. One of the most strongest players in that time, Louis Paulsen. A very strong defensive player. And this game was played in 1873 in Vienna. So Adolf Anderson has the white pieces and Louis Paulsen has the black pieces. Anderson starts the game with playing e4, e5 by Paulsen. Knight to f3 and d6. The Philidor defense. A passive opening. d4. e takes on d4. Queen takes pawn. Knight to c6. Bishop to b5. Bishop to d7. And bishop takes knight. Bishop takes bishop. Bishop to g5. Blocking. Knight to c3. Bishop to e7. And in this position, Adolf Anderson castled in the queen side, and Paulsen castled in the king side. Rook from h to e1, rook to e8, king to b1, bishop to d7, bishop takes, bishop takes, on f6. Anderson wants to open the e-file, e5 by Anderson, bishop to e7, knight to d5, defending the bishop, e takes on d6, C takes on d6, and exchanging the rooks, knight to d2, and let me show you the other important moves in this chess game, and I will make an exception for this game, and I will skip ahead to the key moment of the game, and the game transformed into this position after fighting long and hard. Both players were pretty strong players for their time. So it is black to move, and Paulsen captured on h5, Anderson captured on f5. So as you can see, Anderson is attacking from the king's side, and Paulsen is trying to attack in the queen's side, and breaking the defense of Anderson. Queen to f7 by Paulsen, not exchanging the queens. Bishop to d7, knight to e4, queen to f5, rook to h1, and rook to e8 by Paulsen. And we can say that this is the key moment of the game. What would you do in this position? Can you see the killer move? Well, Adolf Anderson sacrificed his knight. Knight from e to f6 by Anderson and forking the king and the rook. Well, Paulsen captured the knight, but then knight takes on f6 by Anderson, forking the king and the rook. We have king to f7. If king to h8, then black is getting checkmated. There is no defense. So king to f7, and then rook takes on h7 by Adolf Anderson, blocking with the bishop. Anderson played rook takes on g7, sacrificing the exchange, temporary. King takes on g7, and knight takes rook with check. We have king to f8. If bishop takes knight, then queen takes queen. Black needs to resign. After knight takes on e8, black can't even capture back the knight. King to f8, and queen takes queen. Bishop takes queen, and knight takes on d6. Anderson has three extra pawns. And also going after the b-pawn. Defending the b-pawn. Bishop to d7. Knight to e4, king to g7. And in this endgame, as you can see, white is easily winning. So let's skip ahead once again. So both players are trying to activate their kings. King to c4, knight to e4. King takes pawn, knight to d6, bishop to c6 and f6. How to defend these two connected pass pawns? And let me show you how. It is impossible. So king to c3, going after the c-pawn. Anderson played another beautiful move. And he captured the pawn on b5. Louis Paulsen captured the knight. Accepting the sacrifice, well, Anderson captured the last hope of Louis Paulsen. 
after Bishop takes on b5, Adolf Anderson played the last move of the game, and after that move, Paulsen resigned. Anderson played f7, and Paulsen resigned. How to defend? The passed pawn, it's impossible. And let me show you the possible continuation. King takes pawn, and promoting a queen. It's over for Paulsen. Another beautiful chess game by Adolf Anderson. So this is why after f7, Paulsen had enough and he resigned. And thank you for watching. And I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye.